Today we're going to go through the steps to install a pre-hung door through a drywall wall where there was no previous existing door and we'll deal with any of the plumbing or 2x4s that may be found inside the wall and exactly how you frame it out and make all this come together. Go ahead and draw your cutout for your door. So what I've done is I've added an extra 3 inch, you know, more than what the width of our door is and that's where the casement that will actually uh, go through. Next I'm going to take my drywall saw and I'm just going to basically go ahead and just insert it. When we're first getting ready to make our cut, the thing we have to be careful of is that whether there could be an electrical wire running horizontally you know, through this cavity. And so I'm going to basically just cut a little small circle so I can get access and kind of take a look. And then I'll come and I'll make the whole run going down. I took my circle saw and I went ahead and drilled a hole into the drywall so I could look inside and make sure there was no hidden wires or plumbing or anything that might cause me to do damage inside the wall. And I'm just going to insert it into the drywall. I've gotten the piece of drywall out now and as we expected there's a stud you know right in the middle of where our door is going to be and what we're going to do is we're just basically going to cut this thing off the top and we're going to pull it out of the bottom and then we'll install another 2x4 on both sides you know to basically reframe this thing in. Go ahead and push your saw through the other side of the wall and that way you can get both your cuts in perfect alignment for your opening. I've gotten both sides of my drywall cut out now. Now it's time to cut the baseboard. I like to use a, a fine vibrator saw to get all the way down to the very bottom of the baseboard. Now with it cut all the way down to the floor, this piece will just actually just kick right out of the way. When you go to cut this stud off that's right in the middle of your doorway, you're going to need to cut it an inch and a half higher than the drywall. So you actually have to puncture right through the drywall to get your sawzall blade or whatever to run through this thing because when you put the new header cap in here it needs to recess up inside these two pieces of drywall you know to make a header for the door. Pull our stud right out of the... Now with the baseboards gone off of both sides now it's time to cut out this 2x4 footer and you can either use a sawzall or a fine oscillating tool or whatever you think. I've cut all the way through, so now this thing should just pop right out of here. Ah, there you go. Next we're adding the 2x4 that makes the side of the door frame. And it just splits, and it just fits right in between the two pieces of drywall. Next we've added this header piece right across the top. Put a couple screws into that stud we cut off. And we've used actually our brad nailer with two inch nails, you know, to go ahead and fasten it into the corners. And then we've also gone through and put all of our drywall screws you know, around the perimeter. Now we're ready for the casing that's going to go around this piece. Okay, before we finish this repair, I need about 60 seconds of your time to check to see if you need any eternal repair. You probably think to yourself, eternal repair? What's that? Well, let me pose a question to you. Are you a good person? And I'm sure many of you out there watching this video right now, you're probably really nice folks, okay? Let's put the same question against God's standard, the Ten Commandments. Okay, one of the commandments says, thou shalt not lie. And I'm sure if you're honest with yourself at some point in your life, you've told at least one small lie before. We all have, I have too, okay? Another one of his commandments says, thou shalt not steal. And I'm sure if you're honest with yourself again, at some point in your life, even no matter how small it was, you've probably stolen some small item, okay? Those rules define what sin is, okay? And if you broke even one of those rules, such as lying and stealing, that means you've sinned. We all have, okay? There isn't anybody that hasn't. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The punishment for sin is going to hell or eternal separation from God. But the good news is that Jesus Christ came. He took a brutal beating on the cross. He was sacrificed on the cross, went to the grave. Three days later, he arose, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross is he was taking the punishment for my sin and for your sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was and what he did and you repent. Okay? For the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Many of you are probably thinking, hey, I'm a good person. I've done so many nice things in my life for people. Surely God wouldn't look on me unfavorably. But the Bible actually says that by grace you've been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. The only way to be reconciled for eternity with Jesus Christ in heaven is through putting your faith and trust 
and what he did personally for you on the cross, taking your punishment. Okay, now let's get back to our repair. I'll have some more information on it for you on that at the end of the video. Going forward with this new installation though, where we just basically cut a hole through a wall to install a new door. When working with these pre-hung door systems is a lot easier than trying to build out your casement yourself and hang your own door. Certainly they come already with the hinges, you know, routed and recessed into the framework and into the door. And then they also come pre-done with the keyhole already cut into the door along with the plunger cut into the casement. This will save you a lot of time. It's worth the extra $40 to buy the casement with the door. The way these pre-hung doors work is it's basically a sandwich type of thing. You can see how there's actually two pieces to the casement and they interslide into one another and that makes it where the space between the two sides of the wall you know, can be variable you know, depending on how far out you pull this thing out when you set the door in place. It also comes with a trim already installed on it so that this whole piece just basically sandwiches right into your door opening. Now certainly you have to cut the door opening through your wall to be bigger than what your door is. So while we are installing a 32 inch door, the hole that we're cutting has to be 34 by 82 and a half. The other consideration is that there's left-handed doors and there's right-handed doors on these pre-hungs. So you need to figure out which way you want your door to swing before you go down and purchase your pre-hung door. When going to hang your door into your opening, separate the two pieces from my pre-hung door and this will better illustrate. You can see how this groove right here goes inside the part that's attached to the hinged part of the door. We want to attach the side with the hinges permanently first. That way, over here on the side where the door swings, we can move this in and out or put spacers in it as needed to make sure that the clearance as our door swings shut is proper. So let's go ahead and open it up. Okay, being sure not to put a nail through this part right here because we need to come and put the other side of this door hang together. We're gonna put the nails over here on this side of it with it pushed up as far as it'll go, go in this direction. One thing to watch out for is the screws coming out of this pre-hung door casement for the hinge stick out a little bit. Sometimes if you think you're getting this thing pushed all the way up flush with the wall, it's actually hitting on these screws that are coming out of the hinge, which won't let it go all the way flush up. Now that we've gotten the side with the hinges installed permanently, this side here needs to be adjusted to the right width to allow for the proper clearance of the door when it closes. The doorknob side of your frame enclosure that you're installing actually has the ability to slide up and down. And we're gonna go ahead and install a screw in the top part right here so that we can kind of adjust exactly where our clearance needs to be on the top of the door. And then we'll start working on our clearance for the side of the door. Got my screw in place on the doorknob side of my framing. And the purpose of it is that as I turn the screw, it'll adjust the height of this door clearance so I can get my top clearance correct right across the top of my door. If I need to back the screw back out a little bit to drop it down, I just turn it the other direction. Now it's time to start putting shims in the side so I can get the doorknob side of my enclosure exactly right. I've made up my spacer block. You can certainly use multiple layers of different plywoods or panelings or whatever. So I've stuck the block in right here. I've pushed it up firmly against the two by four. Also pulled it this direction. And let's go ahead and put a brad through it. Once you get your bottom spacer in place, don't assume that all the spacers are gonna be the same thickness because your two by four may not be perfectly straight up and down. You may have to do some micro adjusting on the middle so when you install your other spacers, you don't bow this door frame so that then when you go to shut it, it might just hit right in the middle of the door. Now it's time to put the back side of our pre-hung door closure together. You can see how it just basically slides right into that groove. And we just go ahead and push it in tight to the back side of our two by four framing. And at this point now, we can go ahead and nail the center of this thing to perfect the squeeze between the two of them. One thing I like to do is I like to come back through and I put some three inch drywall screws on the hinge side of the casement. And that way it'll keep this thing from ever having the weight of the door try to pull it away from the wall or something like that to affect you know the alignment of the door hey i hope this video has helped you on the repair that you're working on right now as far as the eternal portion i was talking about if you're not sure who god is and if he really exists i encourage you to pray like this say god if you are real if you are out there i pray that you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way 
And when you make that kind of prayer, he's going to answer you and he's going to show you exactly who he is. And at that point, you will know he's real. At the point in time you know he's real and you're ready to accept what Christ has done for you and know that you have eternal salvation with him in heaven, the gospel is so simple. You just pray like this. You say, Lord, I acknowledge that I've sinned and I've fallen short of your glory. I know that you've paid a price for my personal sin on the cross. I know you were the son of God and that you were resurrected and taken my place on that cross. And I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. That's how simple it is. But here's the catch. Just saying those words doesn't do a thing for you unless the heart believes the words you're saying. For the gospel says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe that God raised him from the dead. The believing part is where salvation is. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. So anyways, I appreciate you watching. If you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com. That's eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot of other interesting repair ideas and also some more information on your walk with Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. God bless and have a good day.